we know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Welcome to this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast. I was waiting for you to say, not the Expedition to Soul podcast. Welcome to the Sarah and Anna Fun Time Show, <laughs> where the fun times reign. Always. And forever. And forever. And the banter never ends. Sorry, not sorry for you. We should have a whole episode performed as a musical. <gasps> like the musical episodes on TV shows? Yes. That are obscure. Yes. And they happen out of nowhere and nobody's anticipating them. We should. We should. I can't say worth a D-A-M-N though. But that would be the fun of it. It would be. Because I'd have some elaborate head. hand dances. Mm. You've seen me sing Purple Rain. It's not good for anybody to see, but I mean, I'll get into it. It's one of my favorite things that you do. Yeah. I think I that it. it's quality. I think it's charismatic. I think that it embodies you on a soul level. It Shows lets my us commitment. really know. Yes. Yeah, my commitment to life. It does. Anyway. And actually, I don't really sing Purple Rain, just so everybody knows, because I only know the part Purple Rain, Purple Rain. That's all I know. So I just do that over and over again with enthusiasm. <laughs> Good hand gestures. Yeah, and lots of hand gestures and facial expressions. Very serious. Yes. Quality. All right. Well, speaking of commitment to life, <laughs> one way to bring commitment to life, that doesn't make sense, one way to bring magic to your everyday life and retain your commitment is through making everyday magic. Indeed. Indeed do. Indeed do. do. So that's what we're talking about today. If you love all things magical, which obviously you do because you're listening to this podcast (laughs) and you're like, what are they having? Yeah. What are they having? I want some of that. What we're having is everyday magic. Huzzah. Excelsior. We did that backwards. If you don't know, you usually do Excelsior, I think. Okay. People <laughs> who've listened to this podcast for all eternity, meaning like three years, um, <laughs> who usually does Excelsior? It's Anna. Okay. Let us know in the comments after you like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that helps. You know what? It really does help like and subscribe for, I mean, and leaving a review that's not like one stars. I can't stand listening to them because if that's the case, just stop listening and listen to something else. But how about you do five stars? And in the comments you say Excelsior best podcast ever. Huzzah. Huzzah. (laughs) (laughs) It does help though. That's how with the comments actually that you, uh, other people find your podcast for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Aww. Everyday magic. Oh, yeah. If you want more of that, holisticwitchery.com. Get on the wait list for our holistic witchery program. Do and it. She'll start shortly. Do it. Do it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do we're going to give you some of our top tips for making everyday magic. <laughs> Who doesn't want some top tips from us? We're so full of hot tips, important tidbits. I know. So magical. You know what? People, I think that we are actually full of top tips because we both live lives that we enjoy for the most part. And we both, I think, laugh every single day until we cry. Yes. We both have um, spouses that, well, in my life on any given day, I want to put him outside, make him live there. But also, he is actually wildly supportive when I can communicate with him in a way that is that he can understand. That is effective. That is effective. Yeah. That's our problem is communicating in the same wavelength. When I can communicate in his language, 
then he is wildly supportive. And generally speaking, yeah, we've created pretty amazing lives from where we were not that long ago. So Hmm. take our top tips is my point. Yes, I would say same thing as same thing as me. We have actually, actually, actually taken some pretty big reins, I think, on our lives. I think that for everyday people who, you know, second guess themselves and have, you know, falters and lacks and in, in, in confidence. I know specifically myself, I lack in confidence all the time. But if you think about just like our lives and growing up, we really have made some really large changes to mm-hmm. like family repeated cycles, I think, um, yes. and family behaviors and health. And that me and you both in our own ways, different ways, we got there different ways, have taken really strong steps to, to change things. Mm-hmm. And what is more magical than changing and breaking family cycles and trying mm-hmm. to be your best self and learning from those things? Yes. And you're never too old. We hear this so often mm-hmm. from community members who come to us like their late 50s or 60s or even like we have some folks like in their early 70s and you are there's still so much so many years. And I, I said once in like a video or something that um Someone quoted me on it recently, but I was like, 50 is the perfect age to make a big change because you have 50 years of knowing what you don't want. Yeah. So you feel like you're perfectly poised (laughs) to create the life you do want. And so we have some everyday magic tips. Here's how this is going to go down. We're going to give some of our tips. Then you're going to hear from some of our holistic witchery community members. And then we're going to finish out our tips. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Because there are people in the world who have tips that are not us. Surprise, surprise. surprise. And we have made space for them to, to talk amongst the podcast so that you can have a break from our very witty banter. Yes, very witty. All right. Tip number one. <laughs> tip number one involves potions. Anna, do you want to talk about making everyday magic by conjuring up some potions that you would drink in the kitchen? Mm. (laughs) There are so many potions. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. You came here for quality podcasting. We have it. We brought it. Um, don't ever forget it. <laughs> like and subscribe and leave a happy comment. Um, <laughs> um, well, coffee is the first and foremost, obviously, um, because you can stir in some cinnamon or even if you just have your coffee black, you can still hold that cup the warm coffee in it and think about how you want your day to be and infuse that cup with like positive thinking intentions and all these things that you want for the day. But there's also so many teas that you can drink and so many, you know, herbal teas, depending on which ones are right for you and your body, you know, always check in with your primary care physician to make sure you're not taking any herbs that you shouldn't be. Uh, But so many herbs are magical and can help be calming, can help be motivating, uh, but you can also just make potions out of everyday things like water mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, needing a little bit of sunshine in your day, throwing a lemon slice in that water, um, you know, um, making sun tea in the summer. So many things you can do to make magic potions. Um, yeah. And I'm a big fan of having like a magical utensil. So like a magical spoon or like straws, reusable straws are really hip these days. You could totally do like a charged up, a reusable straw. And every time you put it in whatever drink you're drinking, whatever intention you infused in that straw is magic making all day, every day while you're doing that. Excuse me. I need to get to my magic spoon and my hip straw. Yeah. No, seriously. Like I have everyday potion making. I mean, I have spoke about it in the past that I have like special bowls and pots and spoons that like I use when I'm trying to, you know, it's like cold out or everybody's kind of feeling like they might get sick. I have certain things that I feel like 
that I've like had the intention of like have my family like healthy and happy. And I reach for those things often when I am cooking because that's the intention that I have when using those items. And it makes it so everyday potion making in your kitchen and your space is like really super easy. Mm-hmm. True, Tangible. True, true. Tangible. Mm-hmm. Our next top tip is about your front door. So when we say your front door, uh, if you have a house that has like several doors that could be considered front doors, um, then do you live in a mansion is my first question. I'm just kidding. I have two doors that are both front doors and my house is like a thousand square feet. So (laughs) we have two front doors, um, but whatever door you consider to be your true front door, I think is what you should. People like ask us this question so often, this detail of which front door. And we actually use our, what would be the traditional front door. We don't use as a door, period. And then the other door um, would be our front door. So whichever front door is the one you prefer. But your front door is the access to your house. It's like what you're inviting in and what you're setting the tone for. Mm -hmm. Uh, And looking at what's behind your door. Are you, I'm guilty of this, living in a house where there's stuff behind the front door. So you like can't swing it wide open and really say, I am open to everything or making that space for energy to leave if you want it to leave. Um, Cleaning your front door, um, sweeping off your front stoop using like uh, some kind of like a charged up moon water or solar water just to wipe down your front door with the intention of whatever it is you're working on, uh, maybe using some kind, whatever is safe for the kind of door you have, like an oil or just water even to draw like a sigil on your front door um, or write a word like love, peace, happiness, whatever. But your front door, it is that, it is exactly that. It's that space in which you are receiving and releasing every time you walk out, come in. And what is that saying about your home space, your energetic home space. Indeed. Indeed. Tip number three is the images and artwork in your home. You want to take this one, Anna? Well, that could be in a lot of ways. I like if you are somebody who arts or creates yourself, you can use, again, sun, solar water or lunar water to paint you know, whatever you like, you put out under a full moon or under the sun, whatever intention you're having in that water, you could use that to cleanse your brushes, to Mm -hmm. paint your watercolors, and therefore you're making art out of your intention. Um, Also, um, art out of your intention, living, breathing art with each brush stroke. (laughs) You are creating that intention into life, breathing it in. Also, like, you can have things, like, I have something above my desk that says delight in the simple things, and that is everyday magic to be walking by that and see something that says delight in the everyday things, because how often do we forget to live in the now and find delight in the simple things? Um, You know, if you really need to work on an energy center uh, and you're feeling like you're really not grounded, maybe having some, you know, art or vases or things that are red or brown or or things that help you to feel grounded. Um, You know, you need to light some motivation in you, maybe getting some oranges and stuff in your house. Uh, So being able to see art on your walls, to create art, to put things up, um, can help you with those intentions, even like vision boards and having art about like what you want in life um, or uh, memories, pictures of times remembered and how you want your life to be, like having those remembered. Times remembered. Times remembered with each brush stroke, each snap of the camera, each each delight in the colors of the simple. We have a, in my house, not that my house is very well put together, but recently we have been efforting making it more cozy. And the things on our walls, they're um, pretty much all like full of wonderment, which is the kind of feeling that I like to live in. But like... Um, very wonderful trees, suns and moons. We have a lot of uh, gnomes. Gnomes. All gnomes on the wall. We have lots of gnomes, gnomes and, and mushrooms and uh, like rocks and earthly sticks and elements. So you just, uh, I just got to plant prints for my walls because I'm all things earth and Virgo. But you just reminded me I need to look out and put my my. I need to manifest 
a one on mushrooms. Yeah, that'd be fun. I would really love that. Mm. And that reminds you to be, yes, earthly, but also whimsical. Yeah. So the art that's in your house can help you to create the feeling that you want to be having when you choose it with intention. Yes. All right. We're going to pause here from some of our holistic witchery folks. And then we'll be back. Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm one of the community members here at the Sisters Enchanted. And one way that I bring magic into my everyday is as I am making my bed in the morning, I will shake out my sheets and fluff my pillows. And I say to myself, um, I let no energy that does not serve my soul's purpose find rest here and I make space for a magical day ahead. And I sort of say it to myself over and over again as a little mantra um, as I'm making up my bed. And when I'm all done, I have a little magical spritz spray that I use that has some lavender, some eucalyptus, some crystals in it. And I just kind of spray it over my bed to sort of seal the deal. And it's a great way to get my day started in a magical way. Think about what life would look like if you had the foundation to do the shadow work, understand where you're holding yourself back, and the confidence to bring some everyday magic elements into your life, follow your intuition, and know exactly the steps forward for you. Well, that's what we teach you and more in our Holistic Witchery program. Be sure to get on the wait list for Holistic Witchery. It's the one class we think everybody should take here at the Sisters Enchanted. It has changed so many lives and is at the core of all of our fundamental beliefs about who we are and how we propel ourselves forward in a way that makes great change for ourselves and those around us. Check out holisticwitchery.com, get on the wait list, and we can't wait to welcome you into class just as soon as enrollment opens. You know what I can't stand about the internet? There are all these strangers out there trying to tell you what to do and how to live your life. Well, you won't find any of that here at the Sisters Enchanted. We have led our Expedition to Soul free program for years and years now to tens of thousands of people around the world. And what makes it different from everything else out there is that it will help you to map your own journey forward, to look at your intentions, to look at what magic means to you, what witchery, what all the woo-woo spiritual goodness available to you, what it means to you to expand your intuition and so much more. And it's all centered on your unique self, your unique way of being. We host this free class twice per year. So I don't want you to miss out when it's coming up next. Go to expeditiontosoul.com to find out the next dates, get your name on the list. So you get those emails, you get all of the pre class goodies, because even though it's a free class, we load you up with tons of pre materials to get you already working on everything before we even kick off. So head to expedition to soul.com today to find out that next date, get yourself registered, you won't want to miss out. And we can't wait to join you on an expedition to soul. And we're back. <laughs> Our tip number four, I love hearing from people who aren't us. Firstly, because it's just so fun and I get inspired by them as well. Indeed. Yeah. So get on the wait list for Holistic Witchery at holisticwitchery.com. Uh, so you can join those fabulous people in the program. But our next tip is on gardening, which is Anna's tip because y'all know I am not planting any sort of garden. So everyday magic in the garden. You don't have a garden. What are you even going on about gardens? I you have an have indoor garden. garden. Well, that's okay. You speak your piece. You go. Speak your truth. I have an indoor garden. Okay. Well, tell us glorious, that. beautiful, <laughs> living, breathing plants. Lush, who, living lush environment. Plants who thrive in the magic that is my cozy Virgo house. No, but with the plants, you can, Sarah, you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can, um, you know, you can do a lot. You can buy or propagate a plant and, you know, plants really love to have a lot of drainage and aeration. You can write intentions on stones that you're going to help use before you plant and actually plant that underneath your, 
plant. And as it grows, envision it in like growing your intention. Um, not only that, but plants are also a great way to put uh, some crystals or stones that you love even on top of the soil. So obviously you would want to check out the hardness of your crystals to make sure that you're not putting any crystals in there that are going to disintegrate. Obviously. But say you want, obviously, um, say you're like really trying to have some, you know, self-love in your life. You can buy a plant that you love that's beautiful or move one that you already have or ask a friend to propagate one for you and put rose quartz around it and think about every time that you water it, every time that you prune it, every time that you, you know, check on it, dust its leaves to make sure that it's getting all the sun that it needs, that like you are also working on your own self-love because that self-love is in that plant. You're sharing that love with that, that plant. Um, there's lots of ways to do it in the garden. And plus, you know, you fertilize and you do all these things. And every time that you, you know, trim down a plant, every time that you propagate a new one, you can do that with the intention. And again, you can use your solar water, your moon water to water them um, with the intention that you're trying to grow. And as that plant grows, your intention grows. And then I, you can also have the positive mindset too, that if the plant doesn't thrive and grow, that that wasn't the right intention for you at this time. And to try again with another one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why all my plants died, not in the long ago past, but my newest plants are living well. Also, that's probably directly because I hired our mother to help watch our children, my children, who also watches the plants, and I'm not responsible for them. And Marcy that's has probably a thumb. more to do with it. <laughs> Marcy has the greenest of thumbs. She has, oh, we should have our mom on the podcast. We probably could have our mom on the podcast. Ask her what it's like being our mom. <laughs> we should not have her on the podcast. And not we ask should her. totally have her on the podcast. We should record a podcast episode. And if it goes south, we just don't have to use it. What would she say about being our mom? We should I make our predictions first and then have her tell us. I think she would say that she was proud. I think she would too because she's on camera and microphone. But then I think when she's not, she'd be like, you two are S-H-I-T heads. And blah, blah, blah. she might say that on a podcast out loud. She might. Well. She does love us, but she also uses lots of curse words when yeah. discussing but, us. But I think, I think, and hear this magical friends, if you're ever like... Sarah and Anna, they're, they're just silly. They're just silly heads over there. Our, I think that we, together, I think that our mother, Mother Dearest, we call her, <laughs> because she thinks it's funny, not because of any other reasons. Yeah. Um, she finds it a term of endearment um, that she, um, I think, was quite different herself as a young person. Mm -hmm. and didn't ever really find the outlets to be like who she like really wanted to be. And yeah. I think in watching us grow and being like who we really wanted to be, it like really empowered her to like not be so conscious about what like her family thought, what her peers thought. And yeah. I think that she has really learned to be like herself. I mean, she was always herself, but I think that like. Yes. I yes. I. I don't what know. did you just say? <laughs> yes, yes, I. I'm very hungry and I'm starting to get like hunger. It, like hunger is overcoming me. <laughs> okay. Sarah often <laughs> changes into an angry gnome child when she's hungry. Um, she loses all sense of self and becomes like a five year old. <laughs> so hungry right now. Like, I might kick you in the shins and run away while <laughs> trying to go get a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> like my cheeseburger kick in the shins and run really fast. So hungry. All right. <laughs> Our next tip is your stove in your home, your kiss stove. So even myself as a non-kitchen person, we always have like a candle on the stove. And if I make a little small plate altar with like an intention written on it and a candle and like a crystal or something and that sits on our stove. So there's two ways to look at the abundance center of your home. What, well, there's several ways, but here's some of them. One is in Feng Shui. It's the back left corner of your house. And then, um, also I know as you try to figure out what that is from your front door. Yeah. That's your kitchen corner where your microwave is. No, it's where my instant pot is. Oh, okay, your instant pot. Mine is uh, where the 
where my bedroom is and there's a bookshelf and it's very dusty. (laughs) That is not dusty. Yeah, mine's dusty. My space. But the stove is also, because when you think of um, in like nature-based spirituality, we would look at abundance as being like where you're keeping the house warm, where you're surviving, what you're cooking for food, you know, that fire kind of center. And that would be the cooking, like the, the stove oven situation in um, most people's homes. So that's an abundance center and keeping it just cleaned off, um, putting like, like I said, a little plate in the center of it with a, an intention. Of course, you have to remember to move it when you turn the stove on. Uh, don't forget that part. But that's a great way to bring in some everyday magic. I keep two of my favorite cooking vessels on my stove at all times because I have a very tiny kitchen. So I use my two of my most favorite pots are always on my stove, but display in a way that they don't look chaotic or. Yeah. Yeah. Your stove is like, um, it's like a, a hub center though, because people can sit right there and talk. It's a social stove. It is a social stove. I like to think of it as a social stove. <laughs> I do like to sit there and watch you make things that I have no idea what's happening. I'm like, did you just put butter in there? What is that? What's happening? You just stirring it around? What's going on? And I was like, Sarah, what are you? This is easy. I I will say that it is one of my favorite things to have a social stove because now when people are over and we're entertaining, which I mean, obviously we haven't done a lot of entertaining recently, but I did have Thanksgiving thanksgiving here um it was really nice to like watch your family like sit down with their glass of wine and mingle and be able to cook and not have your back to them i feel like your social stove was handy it was was, there's lots of socialness socializing over the social stove around your social stove all right um and then i think this is going to be our last one here so here we go bath and body products Mm -hmm. oh no we have two more okay Bath and body products. We have two more. I know, I'm just hungry. So now I'm like, ah, oh, food. Bath and body products is our next one. And this is thinking about what you're putting on your body. It's something that either we like skip or we just do really haphazardly. But that's the perfect time to take two seconds and send some love, like loving words into your body or um, use like a special... I don't know, something that has an element to it that you enjoy. If you like scents, I'm not particularly a scent person with my, uh, but I do use a face oil that has rose in it and it doesn't really smell strongly or anything or like a rose hydrazole or just writing like a word with your lotion on your arm and rubbing it in Mm. your bath and body products. And that, however that looks for you, like showers, face washing, that's just a really great opportunity to, in all of 10 seconds, add a little everyday magic to your routine. Yeah. And you could take it a step further too. And if you ever want to get into like making your own bath and body products. Say what? And that's like straight up again, like potion making. And you can make your own like whipped body butter with whatever kind of intention that you want. Any kind of, you know, magic that you feel called to use. I used to make most of my own body care. I can't say the same for myself. I once went a whole year washing my hair with chickpea flour. Oh, I had yeah. feelings about that. I'd look over at Anna and I'd be like, there's dust. There's just dust in your hair. She's like, it's not dust. It's chickpea flour. Yeah. But my hair was beautiful during that time. Yes. It still it is beautiful. glorious. It was hair glorious. like the longest it's ever been. Right now, yeah. Yeah, it's super long cool. and scraggly. <laughs> it is the longest your hair's ever been. <laughs> All right. Our last everyday magic tip is one that might surprise you and might give you some feelings, but it's about what you consume inside of your living space, whatever you consider to be like where you spend the most time. When we say consume, we mean anything that goes into your mind or body. Now, Emma and I certainly are not soapboxing here from any kind of purist perspective because... <laughs> I love me some trashy comedy and some junk food, but it is worth mentioning that if you, for example, something I really struggle with is like um, movies or TV shows that are very violent and have like very suspenseful. It heightens my anxiety so much and I have a really hard time like relaxing from that Mm -hmm. and 
So you think about this, when you think that you are energy and everything around you is energy, just being aware of the energy with which you're experiencing your space. So if you're constantly consuming food that makes you feel like crap, and you always feel like crap in your living room, that's like the imprint you're putting on that space. If you're constantly listening to like watching the news, which is making you miserable and want to hide under blankets, um, that's like the energy you're imprinting on your space. So be just being aware of like what's going in, what does it do to your energy? And then how is that, you know, connecting to the space that you live in and what's that creating for you? Mm -hmm. I was going to say too, just from another personal, you know, Sarah shared, like she can't, she's conscious of watching things that give her high ten, like tensions. Me too. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm very conscious of things that um, can, can make me feel nervous. Um, but I also try to be really conscious um, and do a regular like social media detox um, about what I'm consuming. So I know this is kind of like a silly thing to say because we're also on social media. Uh, but I also, I try to be really careful like if I'm watching somebody on YouTube and reminding myself that like we're not seeing the entirety of somebody's life. Yes. Um, you know, that if they can, you know, make this amazing homemade meal for their their huge family. Um, but I also, we don't see like kids running around in the background. We don't see how many times they had to start that video over. We don't see how chaotic the rest of the house got. Um, yeah. And, you know, the same thing with, um, you know, some sort of, um, I try really careful not to consume too much, pe too many people who try to, um, or that make me think that like my body's not good enough or my body's not right or that I'm not eating properly. And so I try to have re regular social media detoxes. And if I'm listening to something and I'm like, this does not empower me or this doesn't make me feel good, then I quickly leave that space mm -hmm. because I don't want it to affect my day-to-day -day thinking or what I think about myself. I don't like anything that makes me feel like I'm not good enough because I already what, have struggles as is. That has to do with everyday magic is, yeah. you know, your energy for one is however you are feeling energetically is directly impacting how you're receiving what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So if you're already feeling really low energetically and then you get this news of like, I don't know, you're being laid off or like your pipes broke in your bathroom, there's water everywhere you're already like down there energetically. And that that's just going, you're not, you're not, you don't have the bandwidth to like properly like support yourself through that versus if you're already just like, you know, we don't like to talk about just like loving and lighting your problems away, but if you're in like a supported kind of, I feel good. I feel good about myself. I feel like I'm strong. I can handle things. You know, I feel like I have tools and resources being in that kind of energy and then something happens, you remember I'm resilient and I can figure this out. Um, and so what that energy you're imprinting in the life around you where you mostly spend your time really can like make or break that for you. So when you're thinking about everyday magic, put yourself, if you're thinking of yourself as the magical vessel, like what energy are you charging yourself up with mm. as you proceed through the day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. we are definitely not purists. My husband, he's more of a TV guy than I am. And we just had to, what were we watching? We were watching um, Dexter, New Blood. He loves that kind of thing. And we watched the whole other one and I watched it. And I will say that I just was like, half the time I was like, just tell me when this part is done. And then covering my face because I just couldn't. It's not even like the blood and guts that like I can actually handle that, like the horror kind of aspect, but it's the tension leading up to the moment that I can't, I just can't do it. Right. I agree. So I, I get very wanna, high. Yeah. I just don't want to, I'm like, just cut to the, cut to the bloody part. Cause I can actually handle that. It's just, the just tension, over with. <laughs> yeah. The tension getting there and they're like, is he going to get caught? Isn't he? I just, mm. it like freaks me out. And then just, I feel my whole body getting like rushed up and I don't like it. Yeah. For, for me, I know that I've had to be very careful because after, um, and this will be the last of my tangents and I won't tangent anymore, but I know that lunch, I know. So you can go and see, so you don't kick anything in the shins waiting for your hamburger, cheeseburger, in the shins. salad, whatever you want to eat. Um, I know that after I had Riker, um, I found myself 
being invited or falling into some, you know, support groups for moms after baby. And some of them were like body and weight loss based. And I remember like, and I already had my own kind of, I mean, like most people have your own self-conscious issues. And Sarah here knows like mine go like way deep to like the bone. I used to not be able to go to school with my hair in a ponytail if I didn't have every bump smoothed out. So like I've got some like very like deep to the, to the bone, like self-conscious issues, um, which I think I've worked really hard to like really be empowered by myself on my best days. Uh, but I remember I was like in this group and people were trying to like talk about supporting weight loss and counting calories and all these things. And I remember seeing just some of the, the images of people and some of the people saying like, this was my pre baby body and this is my after baby body. And it just wasn't a good place for me to be. And I had to leave it like right away because it started to like make me just, um, it made me like second guess, like how I treated my body during pregnancy. And I couldn't be around a lot of other people second guessing their bodies, um, when they either looked similar to mine or didn't look similar to mine. Um, I don't even know where I'm getting at here. But I was like, some people, I was like, I wish I looked like that after I had a baby. Like, I wish, I wish one of my sides of my stomach wasn't longer than the other. And I wish that I couldn't zip my extra baby skin into my fly when I zip up my pants. Like, I wish I couldn't do that. And I had to leave right away because it was so hard for me to see other people after childbirth being so hard on themselves. Yeah. That, like, I couldn't do it because I was like, this is not a good place for me. And I was already really emotional and I'm still really emotional and I'm past a year out and I'm still like really emotional. And I had to leave because it made me not feel good about like myself. Yeah. And I was like, I can't, this is not supportive and positive to me. Mm -hmm. Some people may have felt like it was, but I had to like leave right away. And then I like did a detox of all of like those kind of mom groups I was in. And I had to double check, like which ones do I feel are supportive for me? Not yeah. saying that we were wrong for somebody or right or wrong for somebody else, but for me, I really had to like it really sets the tone of your energy, which sets the for tone sure. for everything else in life. For sure. So mm -hmm. social media and TV and media in general detoxes. Yeah. So important to do. Anna and I are the best at photo shoots when we're <laughs> sit down and we're like, wait a second. That's the side of my belly that's bigger than the other side. That's my eye that does this. <laughs> that's, that's my small eye side. It's fine. Yeah. fine. <laughs> it's all fine. All right. Well, I'm going to go eat some food because I'm a hungry. And we want you. I'm a hungry. I'm a hungry. I got some pierogies waiting for me. I have a half a tray of lasagna in the fridge. Oh, that sounds good, too. We want you to get on the Holistic Witchery waitlist at holisticwitchery.com. If you have not received or purchased the 21-day magical self-care book, why not? You can find out information about that at 21dayselfcare.com. And all these links are everywhere for you. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave a review, share with your friends because sharing is caring. Sharing That's is caring. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. We appreciate all of you. We hope you have a great day ahead. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Expedition, the to, Expedition Soul. to Soul podcast. Podcast. Woo! Woo!